15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Yo, what's up? It's your boy Mike Rashid, and I got a very special guest, my brother, my bro, Mr. Organic. What's up, sir? Man, have no fear, Mr. Organic is here. How you yes, doing, sir, my yes, brother? Sir. He's like a superhero. Man, real life, I am, man. He is, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Literally, like, it's a blessing to really be me. Let's get into that right. immediately. Um, you're a superhero. Right. I'm a superhero, too. 100%. And I talk to people a lot, especially young dudes, and I talk about men going on that heroic journey, you know? And learning, so you know, you acquire so much wisdom. You bump your head a lot, but you learn from those mistakes. You know what I'm saying? Right. But you always trying to. I feel like men gotta at an early age or whenever we gotta step out on our own into the world and do scary things. All oh, the scariest. And it, it kind of builds up our aptitude, right? You know. And w with you, you know, you you have a larger than life personality, right? Um, but what you've acquired and the things that you've achieved matches that bright personality. I appreciate what that. What was your heroic journey like? It was like, man, true and true indeed. It's really like, like it could be written in scrolls, I feel like, like in blood. Because as a kid, I was born so different. Like, I was always the kid that was, you know what I mean, seeing things different, watch different movies than everybody else. Everybody want to watch cartoons, I'm watching Discovery Channel. My brother's mad at me, I'm watching documentaries on World War II and shit. They're like, what's wrong with you? I just need to learn this information. So I was just always different. I always was the leader. Um, always had a passion just to stand out. Like, And it wasn't like standing out, like on some, be a weirdo. I just wanted to differentiate myself from the pack. So, um, as a kid, I always on that journey. And, and at the same time, as I was being so different and being so creative, I was a hustler. So I'm talking six, seven years old. I'm the guy that's at the Rouse. You want to carry your bags, getting a dollar that puts people, the ladies' bags in their in, in they cars. Um, I'm the little kid that's breaking into the vending machines and getting all the candy out and selling at school. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm the first, probably one of the first person in my hood to put the arm in the soda machine and get the soda out. <laughs> like I was yeah. so adventurous with right, getting right, money right. and just. I don't know. It was just a wild upbringing I had. My and the things is the same thoughts I had as a kid. I still have them now. Mm. I just made them come to life, like right. being outlandish and having all these crazy things. Um, so it was like yeah, it was like really a, a saga of greatness, man. Yeah, man. Um, like I had kind of similar uh, origins and genesis, but you know, mine was a little bit different because I had for a good part of my life I was sheltered. Right. Like my mother was so fucking mean and strict. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> my mother's a tough person. Right. And, you know, my father in the beginning wasn't around because he, was he was in college. Okay. College. Of course. And uh, so my mother, like my stepfather was there and, you know, he was a boss. Like, like the epitome of a boss. You right. know what I'm saying? Drug, big time drug dealer in the right. 80s. And, and them drug dealers was, was dangerous. They was violent too. You yeah. know what I'm saying? His whole crew. So, I had like, Look, I had like a driver, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I had bodyguard as a kid, like, you know what I mean? We had that kind of life. And then it all went away when he died. Of you know course. what I'm saying? And then it was like the polar opposite, just poor. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like like my mom having to boil boil water so I could take a bath type yeah, shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Candles when the lights went out. Mm -hmm. It was crazy, right? Yeah. And it's interesting because as a kid, People talk about trauma a lot, and I and I listen to people, and I'm just like, I don't really relate to that extent because I feel like I went through things that are very traumatic. Right. But I'm fine. I'm normal. For sure. If not, I'm better. I, I appreciate these experiences because they made me better. It made me one appreciate things, but also two, not settle for for mediocre never uh, things or, or lifestyle. So, how you feel about that? I don't want to disrespect people who feel a victim to their traumas yeah. but i just I, I have to honestly say i don't really relate to 
trauma and it affected me negatively. Yeah, me either. Because um, I, I had such a delusional, like almost borderline psychopathic personality as a kid that mm. the most harness, harshest things that went on in the environment, I just went through it like it was nothing. Mm. Like me, like I said, breaking the soda machines and all that, I really was doing that because I had no money. And like me at seven, eight years old, getting on the city bus, going way to the other side of town, breaking and going to Chuck E. Cheese High and they're taking the tickets out. No one's so smart and so devious to take the tickets out the bottom of the, the, the little ski ball machine mm -hmm. and sit in front of the store and sell in front of Chuck E. Cheese and sell these other kids going there. You want these things? I'm knowing this as a kid. Mm -hmm. So it was like, and it was out of necessity because I was hungry. So it was like, I made it into a hustle out of necessity. Mm -hmm. So it actually made me such a ferocious character as a kid. But it was, of course it was dramatic because my mom had me, she was 19, had my older brother when she was 17. So no one taught her. Mm -hmm. um, so it was just you, you no, and your brother? I got two brothers and two sisters. Okay. Um, I got a younger sister, two younger sisters. I'm the second oldest. I got an older brother and a younger brother. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, we all got different dads, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Besides one of my brothers and sister. So, and none of them was there. My dad was in prison the entire time, one of the leaders of Black Gorilla family. He died mm -hmm. in prison. You know what I mean? Um, so that was in my blood pool. Like, mm -hmm. people used to talk about my dad. It was like, he was just, it wasn't like a gangster getting drug money. Shit. Mm -hmm. He was just a, a vicious person. Like, right. people say he come in the room and get dark. Like, he was that mm -hmm. guy. Like, yeah. and he died in prison. So that's part of me, too. And then my mom was a natural born hustler, though. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember we had the leather, we in the projects, but we got the green leather couches. Right, we right, got right. the Geo Tracker. She yeah. got the Cadillac. She got the jewelry. One thing about black people and black mothers, Maybe in the projects, but you gonna have some nice shit. That shit was nice. You had some nice shit. So that's why I always had style. It was from right. my mom, and then yeah. the viciousness come from my dad. So yeah. I was a hybrid of that shit. Right. And uh, I, like I always tell people, I think God put that in me to never drink or smoke to activate that dark side to be stayed there the whole time. Mm -hmm. So it's just dormant, but it's there when it's needed. Mm -hmm. But if I think I was drinking, smoking, not on my p's and q's, mm -hmm. that would have activated that instead of my hustler side. Mm -hmm. So I just tapped into my hustler side through my mom. She always had us right. Like even though we in the projects, we I'm the guy with the starter jackets, Jordan's on. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I was just from seventh grade. If she didn't get it, I was going to get it. Right. So I think that traumatic and this dark shit actually played a vital role in me being the, the top level of vicious human I am today. Right, so I appreciate right. it, actually. It's, most people couldn't go through it, but to uh, me it was like a necessity, though. Yeah, I, I was telling a gentleman earlier about, um, you know, how sometimes he was talking about that animalistic instinct that's in man, and I was like, yeah, it's there. You know, and some is there in a, a deeper capacity. And I said, it's very necessary. I said, it's very necessary for men to be dangerous, yes. you know, and to be, you know, violent or have the capacity for violence. But it's important to be peaceful yep. because violence is necessary. If you don't have it, the capacity for it, you're just a victim right. waiting to happen. Right. Right. And who wants to be a victim? So it's, and it's interesting that so there's so many people that are just victims waiting to happen. For you sure. know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's something that I'm not I'm not with, but I also I try to promote for for, for fellas like, oh, learn how to fight at for least. Sure. Go to the gun range, whatever. Yeah. You know, be dangerous. Because be. your women will appreciate that. For sure. They your need kids that. will appreciate that. They you know need what I'm saying? That. You know, and it's not like you walk around like a tough guy, because I don't no. that shit is whack too. But yeah. you gotta be able to have that shit tucked away for if it's if it's if it's needed. But you know, I was explaining to the guy earlier that most of the human existence, life sucked. It, right. it was fucking rough, right? Foraging for food, hunting, you know. You know, the agricultural revolution was not long ago. Right. And then technology is has been happening fast. But we've been at this space for a short period of time. So that outlet of violence and, and is not really worked out for a lot of people. Right. You know, it's a reason why people like violent movies, of course, violent video games. You would see at all time. It's high. in our nature. Right. Violence is just as natural as peace is necessary, is mandatory, is going to happen. But you know, as humans and as intelligent people, we want to try to mitigate it when when we can. Yeah, don't look for it. Right. I always try to mitigate it, mm -hmm. but I got it in case we need it. Yeah, and that, and that's that, that's crazy you said it because as you see, I got the big gargoyle on my chest, mm -hmm. and that's part of my brand is being a gargoyle. I'm hard, but I'm fly at the same time. I'm mm -hmm. not walking around the tough guy. I'm gonna crush everybody. No, but if you play with me, I promise you, you're gonna be a terrible experience for everybody. And I'm going to mm -hmm. go above and beyond to crush you. But I'm walking around my wings out most of the time on some fly cool shit. Right, the last resort true. to let the rock come out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To pull them fangs out. 
well, but they, I will. They say like men is interesting because women are beautiful, right? Right. But men have to do a lot to attract women. And if you look at animals in the wild, look at, like say for instance birds, mm-hmm. they always have some magnificent display for sure. to to court a, a chick. I'm talking about fucking feathers come out, Hell peacocks, yeah. but the it's noises, them. all type of shit. They do little weird dances <laughs> little and shit. Dances, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's 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 why men. That's why we buy expensive cars. On, you know, fine artwork. On, man, you know, stuff that. like that. So it, it's interesting, man. It's like a lot of people don't. They rebel against it and say, "Oh, materialist or you're leading with your money or whatever." I'm like, listen, you, I, you. Like you said, you said you just speaking on like your oppositions, mm-hmm. you crush them, right? Right. That's a rule. Uh, Robert Greene wrote in of 48 Laws of Power, crush your enemies totally. 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 But all is fair and not just war, but love as For well. For sure. So absolutely, if I'm trying to court somebody. I'm going to use all my attributes possible. <laughs> I'm using all my magic. Why you know not, though? And yeah. like, how can somebody be mad at somebody else using their attributes to their, to their likings? It's silly. I want to do whatever I want to do, do what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I'm an eccentric person, but it but it's it's built it's built within my sturdiness. It's not no mm-hmm. it's not a game. So don't mm-hmm. take it for granted when you see me like you going no one ever going to play with me in person. So well, it's you, like you have a solid foundation. Right. So people going to know that too. They can see it and they look a little longer like okay, yeah, I can see what's going on here. And that and that's how I move and I always was a standout individual. Like I always played the Venus flytrap. That's part of my stuff too is that I'm ready to eat whatever, but you going to come this way, I'm going to attract you. And you will be mine. Mm-hmm. I ain't missed yet. I had the baddest girl in elementary school, high school, college, mm-hmm. every city I went to. I'm going to have that one because that is who I am. I'm, I deserve that. Do you feel like um, you feel like you have a lot to prove either to yourself or to other people? I always told people that the, my greatest accomplishment, I proved myself right to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I never really because I, I always knew my attributes was above anybody who was opposed me. I can look at them and like, you ain't got what I got, even if you don't know it. And over time, I always play the end game. I was right. Mm-hmm. No one that was the opposition of me is not, I'm 40 years old. I'm in top shape. I'm 40 years old. I got millions of dollars. Got every supercar. I never drunk, never smoking. Got no baby mamas. How can you fuck with me, man? I can steal 360 windmill right now. Mm-hmm. Like, and what attribute you going to win this? Hands is vicious. You know what I'm saying? Intellectually sound. You know what I'm saying? Sniper with the guns. Like, what are we going to win at? I'm going to win everything. So it was never, I never thought nobody that was on the opposite side that tried to come at me, I had to prove them wrong. I knew they was wrong. Mm -hmm. I just had to prove myself right, and I did. That's a blessing of my life. Right, see, I ask that because I see a lot of me and you. Right. Right? Um, I feel like I am older than you, but not a lot. Mm -hmm. But I feel like spiritually I'm ancient. You know what I mean? I yeah. feel like I've been around. I feel like, man, just even as a kid, I remember being aware of things that when I think back on it as an adult, like, why did I even know that? Right. You know, but I've, I have, I have, I do have things to prove. And mine is like, it's interesting. It's proven to myself and to people that I really fuck with that, that I'm a good person. Cause you're past. Because I've, you know, I've made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and things that I'm not proud of. And I, you know, I'm always like when I was a fugitive and I was going through all of that. I feel like that was a grace period. Right. Like, all right, are you are you a good person or not? For sure. Because they were trying to put me away for a long time, and I'm like, they can't. Like, I I'm not that guy. Yeah. I don't deserve that. Right. Mm-hmm. So, like, I obviously made it out of that. So, I was like, I guess I am a good person. Right. You know, but I just never know because I always feel a need to like try to be good and consciously try to be good. Yeah. I feel you on that note. Um, cause I, I get what you're saying on that because people see my personality, of course, is, is charismatic. is is very, you know, almost a borderline narcissistic. And, um, so only my closest friends know that I'm really a soft hearted person to my mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. Do I give it to everybody? Of course not. Cause I'm not an open person to everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yes, yeah, so a lot of people see me a certain way, and I don't get it. I'm like, damn, but it's been that way my whole life. Right. It always is people like, don't go around him, he this and that. And I'm like, I don't even do shit. Mm. I'm just chilling. Why they don't want me around? Right. Why they feeling some way about me? I ain't, yeah. I'm chilling in my own world. I get that too, bro. Yeah. You it, like, some people fuck? are just not comfortable. Yeah. But here's the thing, though. I'm going to tell you why. All right, so I always preach about, like, when, you know, I, I put a lot of emphasis to the young men, you know, because... I'm 44, but I still feel young as shit. So right. I relate. We relate. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, but I, I be like, look, like I, I think of my days of like being in the streets and being a, being a leader, 
And, you know, it was important for me to prove certain things, prove to my guys, because I'm a very psychological person. And I'm right. like, so-and-so here, so-and-so here, so-and-so. These are the, these are the, these are the torpedoes. Right. Like, what's stopping them from turning on me? For right? sure. And, bro, I never understood why these guys was loyal to me and loved me, right? Mm. I'm like, what the fuck is it about me, right? So I would make sure that I would hop on the front line. Right. When I wasn't supposed to. Right. Just so everybody know I'm not, it's not sweet, right? Uh-huh. But, you know, when, when shit hit the fan for me and I went on a run, like, I felt like I was about to die, bro. Because <laughs> right. It was like, there was some really, like, tough dudes that I was having run-ins with. And I was talking to them in ways that nobody would talk to them. You of know course. what I'm saying? So, like, I, I, you know, that's my defense mechanism is like running after the Chasing scary shit. Yeah. I'm going, I'm coming to you full speed ahead. Right. That's terrifying to them. Right. So, so make a long story short, I, I was kind of like my actions was that of a person of a tyrant leading out of fear. Right. Right. And I tell people all the time when you lead with violence with the threat of violence people fear you and they're not comfortable around you right and people will try to kill you because people kill those who they're afraid of right rightfully so for sure and but i said when you lead out of love people hop in front of a bullet for you that's true you know what i'm saying so i know i got some dark elements to me right that i'm really trying to like purge right at, at least a perception of it you for know sure. because i wore it for such a long time it's hard for me to shake that off and that makes some people uncomfortable around yeah. me and it sucks because i don't like that yeah you know I, mean? I, I can feel that too because um yeah i was always known as that guy like you know what i mean if something go wrong i'm the first one you know what i'm saying even mm-hmm. i'm in the streets we going somewhere i'm the first one in the house i'm first mm-hmm. one shooting i'm the first one fight i'm a, so it was like i was well known for that and um but I got a real good, joyful personality, too, that once I tapped into that, because I knew God, I always felt anointed. You, you probably had this, too, like when girls, like, man, you feel like a godly figure or, like, you're just different. or You know what I'm saying? So girls, all like, clairvoyant women always come mm-hmm. to me, like, attract to me and tell me these things and, like, scare me sometimes. Like, you've been here before. Like, your presence is your aura. I'm like, I always thought that, but it was, it's always a woman, for some reason, has it that is, energy bro. It is. that it knows is. that in you. So it's like. I've been told that by a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, okay. So why am I having this energy? Why? So I have a purpose here. So that's why you see, like, within the recent years, you go through my content, you see me give these statements and this pushing motivation and inspiration through my own type of way. But I know people listen to me and watch me. So let me use it in the right way. I'm not trying to scare people off. I'm not. Because we can shit on people all day, bro. We got everything. We physically fit. We yeah. got money. We got personality. Well, we, we shit we on people ready. is ugly, though. But it's ugly. It's and, and, and so I don't want to do that. I want to encourage my people. You can do this, too, because right. it's real. Like, yeah. And people get mad at you when you do that. Like. Yeah. You know that's okay. That's their problem. You know? Right. Listen, like when it's people are bizarre sometimes. Very <laughs> yeah. strange. And when they hop out the window on some weirdo shit, I used to want to like chastise them and dish them, sure. dish them sanctions. But I, I learned that two things. Even if somebody shit on me, do something towards me, when I get retribution, I look worse. Of always. Because I'm usually stronger, more powerful than them. Right. Right. But when I just fall back. They usually unravel themselves at some point. It just it shows a, a level of godliness and kingness when you just allow a peasant to be a peasant. Right. And you don't engage. Right. But you see it and you just don't engage. Like unless yeah. it's you know, forced upon you. If it's imminent, then we got yeah, to Yeah, yeah. But uh, from afar it's like Yeah, but it's very rare that <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you, know you would never like you yeah. you don't want that for real, champ. God bless you. You know <laughs> yeah, what I'm saying? Right, right. So oh, yeah, it, it's yeah. it's a, a thin line that that I always walked that I'm trying to just constantly clean it and like you said purge out the the the, the evil aura or the mean aura that I don't want no more I just want right. to make people happy I want people motivated I want people to get this money I want people to feel how I feel every day waking up in a mansion and driving supercars and wearing every mm-hmm. piece of jewelry and dream watches and a beautiful woman that I that you know what I'm saying I didn't even plan to have like right. I just wanted to be a vigilante my whole life so that, that, that part that part the beautiful woman part man like guys don't understand like I, I was talking about this shout out to uh, Myron and Fresh, Fresh and Fit, but we were just talking about, like, I was saying how people nowadays, they move in with zero intention, right? So they just fucking move around, fucking, fucking, fucking. It's like, what are you trying to do? Right. You know, and I, I, I got to give Kevin Samuels a lot of credit because mm-hmm. 
he put a lot of emphasis. He, he's very black and white in his teachings, but you know, it's a lot of truth in what he says. Most and definitely. one thing he says, like, you want to die alone? Yeah. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. Wow. And that Corona stuff sparked it because we never know. Like, we think we healthy. We don't know what's inside that blood. We don't, yeah. that shit could have snapped the son of, you know what I mean? Really and you laying that ventilator by yourself. It's all slow. them bitches you was fucking ain't thinking of you. Nah. You about to go die slow, man. Yeah. And who going to be there by your side rubbing your damn toes and make right. sure your damn toes work when you get up? Right. You know so what I'm saying? When you open to like, when you have intention, I, I'm moving intentions, man. And when you have, and I've had intentions on a relationship for some time. I mean, I've, I have my fair share of debauchery. Of course. You know but, you know, I got tired of it. Yeah. So I was like, nah, I want, I need that special shit. You know right. what I'm saying? A couple of reasons. One, my most successful friends are married. Most definitely. It's something about that kind of focus, that, that stability that gives you a different type of focus right. and hustle. But, but second, I don't want to die alone. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And our grandparents, our parents, everybody 40, 50 years of, of togetherness. And I'm like, damn, I'm 40. Right. <laughs> like, when am I going to? We got to be realistic. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So it's like, I'm tripping. And I be telling T right here, too. It's like, bro, you know, what are you going to? You going to be 50? You going to wait till you're 50? Right. 55? Right. The windows get slimmer and slimmer for, sure. for to choose from. You know and what I'm yeah, saying? Then, then your, then, then, yeah, then, then not you gotta, only. You yeah, your get choices forever. get different, too. You got to get a widow, a widower. Come on, a man. Widow, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, you can't do you know, it. Fuck all that shit. So, so it's like, yeah. It, life is good with a, a solid woman yeah. holding it down. I, I definitely think so. Because yeah. um, even when I got to the pinnacle of my success and um, full Mr. Organic fame and I could walk around and get any girl, I'm talking about the baddest girls that I've ever seen on IG just DMing me and I like your style, your motivation. And I'm like, shit. But I just never indulged into that level once I got it because it was like, something was telling me just to have balance. Like I said last mm -hmm. time, you got to have balance with the bag. And it felt like to be blessed, you had to have balance. So that's when I had my girl, good luck shit just fall upon my lap. Mm -hmm. You know, from my new um, game, Rumble Trader, that came like out of nowhere. Um, mm -hmm. Me learning crypto and shit, that mm -hmm. shit came out of nowhere when I was in this relationship. Me getting different acting roles, all that stuff came when I was with her. So I feel like God made sure if I have a, a good, stable balance, I'm going to be blessed forever. I want to get into Rumble Trader because right. this is incredible. But I, but I just want to add on to to like I can attest to that because you know I've been you know when I was doing illegal things life was good right. not really because I was stressed out mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying that shit's scary bro like yep. people don't know what that shit feel like when your phone rings and you like paranoia rolling over gun to bed every time yeah, somebody looked you look through the window shit, all, all that night shit. yeah it's crazy so but once I got past that and purged all of that shit and start doing the right things. Life has been good and it's been growing, but it seemed like, you know, being in, in like the, my relationship now with my woman, it's like, it's crazy, bro. My head spins with the amount of opportunities that present themselves. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they're like, what do you want? Uh-huh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, okay. And it's, I deserve it because I ain't doing it for me. I'm doing it for her, my children, my right. family, because... I want to make everybody in my world proud. Right. And and I work extra hard for her, for my kids, for everybody. So even my baby mom, that's one of my closest friends. That's dope. She, she, we a big family. She lives with me. You that's know what legendary. She, and my girl. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like I need more for them, for right. everybody. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but yeah, having that found when it was just me, just whatever, shit was cool. Yeah. But now it's different. It's not like a solid foundation, like yeah. real business, like right. real opportunity. Not no little knickknack shout outs and shit yeah, like that. I'm yeah, talking about yeah. some partnerships, some right. equity in this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that shit, the big boy mm -hmm. shit, the sleep mm -hmm. money. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I don't want to be a hustler forever. I want to be a businessman. Right. I right. need to make this money while I sleep. I want exactly. to want it to grow. I know exactly. 10 years, Kobe put six million into body armor. You wake up, it's worth 400 million now. That's what it's about. The Nas, five, four point five in the ring and you get 40. I need that's, that shit. That's what I was all you know about. What I'm you know what I'm saying? So, so you got some this fucking dope, yeah, right? Man. This Rumble Trader, Rumble Trader. I want to know. They need to know about this yeah. because they can um, make some money on this. They can. Not only can you make money, you actually could learn, you know, financial literacy that we all need to learn anyway about stock market and trading and options and all that stuff that no one taught us. That we was kids and we look at the Wall Street Journal, we don't know what the fuck that is. But now we got these apps from Crypto.com to um, Robinhood to Coinbase and all. I mean. Think about it. TikTok was the number one app for the last couple of years. Now it's Coinbase. So mm -hmm. we're tapping into the financial literacy of the world. And it's like the gold rush right now. So with that being said, um, 
I basically came up with a legendary new game that's played. Not only you can win money, you can learn to trade and learn how to trade. It's called Rumble Trader. So basically what it is, you put like a, say it's a thousand people that want to win $300 and you all think you're good at trading. You put $5 in that pot and you trade for three days. The person who has the best trading um, amount of money they won um, through that week or three days or whatever, yeah, you win the pot. You win a three hundred for five dollars. And right. you gotta think about this. If you put five dollars on a trade on, on um in the stock market, you wouldn't get three hundred dollars from that. You know how hard mm-hmm. it is to mm-hmm. sixty times your money? Yeah. It's, it's almost impossible with five dollars. Right. But you if you're good at trading, as you say, you ain't got much money, you could put five dollars in there and you could take listen, that three hundred and use it for if, real. Even if you don't win. Right. For five dollars, you gonna learn a lot. You're learning, and then you might be going against a top level person that's you very really, smart. You really learn. Yeah. Come on, man. So that's what I um, came up with, and it, and it's live. You could go there now, rumbertrader.com, and, and play. And uh, it's it's a legendary opportunity, not only for me, of course. I'm I'm into the money, but I'm training and teaching my people about financial literacy, literacy trading, and Wall Street, and all that good stuff. And I, and I'm gonna say something, man. Like I know what I do, what what we all do. You know, we're influencers, right? right. We influence people. We have the means to kind of like shift consciousness, right? Spark ideas, mm-hmm. plant seeds in people Man. for things that's going to be beneficial, and teaching people how to how to fish, how to make money. That that gives you so much depth with them. You know what I'm saying? Because right. you know when I when I was doing expos, man, and. You know how the lines and I'm talking to people, man. I be really touched by shit that people be saying. To me. Yeah, it's crazy. Like what, how meaningful it is. But being able to add, give them a, a whole nother dynamic to make money. That's a that's a that's game changer. So it's like it's something that I forgot. Somebody said this though. If you can help somebody mentally, that's one thing. Mm-hmm. Help them physically, that's another thing. You can help them financially. Now you didn't change their yeah. whole life. Right. Right. So we could do and we could do all those things yeah. at any beck in time. Right. So like we in the best in a blessed position to really change the world, man, especially mm-hmm. our community. There never been nobody like us that's speaking like this, looking like this, living like this. So we are the chosen ones. And that's what I feel my purpose is. And I ain't going to stop till a kid come up to me. Like I said, one of the best things I ever had to happen to me was a kid. That I used to um, watch him like babysit him almost when I was in my transition to finding what I want to do. And his mom used to, you know, have me working at her school but wash her, wash her kids. So now, fast forward, I was like his biggest, you know, influence as I was doing YouTube when I lived in Minneapolis. So when I'm out here, now he's in college. Mm-hmm. She called me like a month ago crying. I'm like, what's going on? She's like, you don't understand what you've done to my son's life. I'm like, what? He's like, you got to understand. He's He got crypto. I looked at his phone and I seen that his portfolio was like six figures in the stock market. I'm like, what? She's like, no, you don't understand. That's way more money than I ever had. He just went to the bank, got his own loan to get a a car. He got a zero, like a 1% interest on a car, got a brand new 2020 car. Because of you, he just follow you. She crying. I'm like, what the fuck? She's like, you didn't even know he because he don't ever tell you this, but he's watching you every day and taking what you're telling him and mm-hmm. doing it. Mm-hmm. So I, I that let me know I'm doing something right. And that, and that just turned my perspective up to another level. So when I was at SEMA, people coming up to me talking, and um, I just pour every time I'm around people. I'm mm-hmm. not I'm not standoffish. You you really want to talk to me, I want to talk to you and give you some shit to live on. So God is great, man, and I just want to keep planting them seeds in people and watching it grow. That's dope, man. Yeah. So you went to SEMA. Which cars did you take up there? Um, I actually, um, my girl just took her Hellcat, drove it down there because I was picking up the 720 because it got mm-hmm. the new wrap. Bro, and, um, low key, I'm, I'm thinking about getting my girl a Hellcat. That should be hard. She into that shit. Oh, she'd be ferocious in that. Yeah. I think you I should, for sure. Yeah. Everybody getting cars right now in the house, so yeah. I'm thinking about getting her a Hellcat. She'd yeah. love that. I think that'd be yeah. hard. So, uh, yeah, I drove it down there. I didn't take none of my other vehicles, um, but uh, I was just picking up my 720. And tell you yeah. the truth, it's out there. Yeah, because okay. that's where Reflection Details okay. are my partners. They do all my raps. And um, i never been to SEMA before in my life. Ain't mm-hmm. no niggas at SEMA. That's how I took it. I'm like, man. But my partners at Tire Stickers also, they were there, had a booth. Mm-hmm. So they're like, man, we need another car. I'm like, all right, my car there. Just That's take perfect. it over there. And they just dropped a new technology to have the wrap match the tire stickers. First time ever I doing that. it. That's dope. They That's appreciate fine. it. So I'm like, go ahead, do it with my car. Yeah. So I'm not even thinking what's going on. I'm just right. popping in to grab my car. They're like, no, it got to stay for a week. I'm like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Hold on, what? I want my shit. Yeah, I'm about to take this mother. Like, no, it's right. stuck. I'm like, fuck it. So then I'm like, all right, I'm going to make the best of it. Right. Every day I go by the car, talk to people. Right. And it was a legendary experience, man. Got some good networking and also just touching the people that rocked with me, man. They put me in a position to have that car right 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 yeah just, just the podcast be long so i'm sure she don't be my girl be hearing every little part but right last week i just went and got a gang of gang of cash like, right like a trash bag full of hundos yeah right and i'm about to buy every, like my son he getting his car that's what i'm um, talking about we're gonna try to get it today i just don't have time but I'm right gonna get it tomorrow and 
I, I've been like diverting her. Right. right. So she has no idea. But I think we get her a Hellcat. That's vicious. Yeah, I think we get her That's a Hellcat. That's vicious. Hellcat. You can't go wrong with that, man. Yeah. It's, it's a beautiful feeling. I bought my brother. I mean, I didn't buy it from but I bought me. It was like a very exclusive car that my dog Slim, tall guy car reviews design. It's a mm-hmm. super stock Hellcat Challenger. No one even had it. Right. And um, in the color, and it was red interior. It was like one of one right. from the um, from the dealership. And um, I bought it. I was like, damn, it's dope. My brother came to visit me. He's like, man, I love this car. I'm like, I was going to give him my Porsche Panamera because mm-hmm. I'm about to get rid of it. But he's like, he like this. I'm like, this motherfucker 120, brother. Like, mm-hmm. goddamn. Right. But I was like, I'm going to give it to him. Yeah. So nice. I drove it down there to Phoenix yeah. for his birthday mm-hmm. and gave it to him for his birthday, that's, man. That's he still be driving. It. It's a machine. Like, that's he dope. in it. You know what I mean? It's a Challenger. Yeah, the Challenger one. Yep. I remember I had a, I had a Magnum back then. Oh, that shit? was the shit, boy. Yeah. You had a Magnum. You was yeah, crushing it. Yeah, but motherfucker's ugly now. You look yeah, back. Yeah, now they whack. But at the time, it was, you had a Magnum, boy. But it was a station wagon. Yeah, <laughs> was, that was crazy uh, yeah. at the time, though. Now, I wonder why they stopped making them. Yeah, I know, right? Because it's just like the 300s at that same mm-hmm. time. They and Phoenix, them, 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 but at that, that yeah. time, them two was yeah. the ones to have. Yeah. Like, you had that, it was over with. I remember a cat, bro. This is like two years ago. I'm in my Bentley, flying spur, pull up, barbershop. And he he had a, that 300. He's like, damn, our shit kind of looks the same. Oh, my God. Like, People, like, yeah, hey, yeah somebody said that to me. Don't baby like that, bro. Don't, don't do ever, that. why would you ever let that. that come out your mouth, boy? Don't do that. You know what I'm What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> is you is you smoking crack today, man? Oh, this man. ain't no comparison, man. Hey, bro, you know like, what I mean? I you got them XJ 900s. Ain't nothing <laughs> right, the same right. about pro this, wings. man. Big pro wings, man. I'm in the Jordans, man. Right. With the snake skin, man. I'm like, I'm out of here. Yeah, you disrespect. I can't even laugh with you. I can't stand when people don't appreciate cars. Yeah. You know what this costs? Right. You know what this is? That's why, like, I don't like, I don't like subtle cars. No, I like cars that make a statement. We gotta have an understanding, cause you, you, so you know what it is. You gotta have an understanding so you know at all that, times. I hate to sound like this, but I want you to know that you can't have this. You can't fuck with me. You can if you work hard, but yeah, yeah but see that hard, that means so. if you if you own my type of time, I mean you own your own. You ain't competition, right? You can get your shit, yeah. But don't think that you fucking with me, yeah. So even if you get more, yeah, I'm still yeah. me. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, don't right, think you right, crushing right, me because right. I can't be crushed. You know what's interesting, bro? It's people I know people that are successful that are they not confident enough to drive nice cars, right? It's weird. It's intimidating to themselves. I can't do that. I can't. Do oh, that my much. wife would get mad. I want to do it. It was a guy just had the car wash with me. He's like, man, oh, I love that car. I just got me a Beamer. And it's a good Alpina edition V12. Right. He's like, but it's subtle. Yeah. He said, I would love to drive something like that. Then why the fuck you I'm ain't? not driving a 12 cylinder BMW. I'm sorry. What is that? I can't do I it. I need something to. I hey, man. It. I can't do we it. We are Batman. We are yeah. Superman. We are Iron Man. Yeah. I'm living like a. Su- I'm Thanos, right. man. Right. I'm Thanos in the whip, man. I remember. I'm riding with this girl. This is some years ago. I'm in the in the in the big body S class. And it was like a it was white and it was a white C class at the gym. And she right. was like, she was like, Oh, is that your car? That same car? I was like, get out. Yeah, you got to go. <laughs> get out. You got to go, man. That was the, and that was the problem with Hellcast for me when I first had them. I got Hellcast for business wise. And um, but it was like people. Oh, I, oh my! My ex boyfriend had a Hellcat. No, no, I mean or a no, Charger. No, no, yeah, no, he didn't. no, no, he didn't have no Hellcat, yeah, bitch. Yeah. This eighty thousand, man. It's completely different. Like, don't you ever different. open your yeah. mouth? Where he work? Where he got? What he had you one of a, these? You get a beautiful brand new Charger for forty grand. Yeah, 40 grand. like it's not this is not it, it's man. Not don't you ever play yeah, with me? So yeah. from then on, I wanted the most exotic, the most. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Riding. I'm gonna be the superhero that I always dreamt I was as a kid. That little mm-hmm. weird eccentric kid had to make my dreams come true. That's why my cars look like they look. That's why I look like I look. You know. I'm living my dream. You know what fucked me up back in the day? It was uh, Mike Tyson pulled up to the gym. Uh, this is like shit. This is years ago. He pulled up to the gym in a big ass Rolls Royce, sitting, right. sitting in the back with a driver. Uh huh. He got the car, shorts on, uh-huh. fresh, Wu Tang playing loud as shit. Uh huh. Like, That's the feeling. Because we come, like I said, we came from the best era, that late 80s, and we yeah, saw them niggas yeah. that with the big chains, right. them outfits, them cars. Bro, I'll be showing my son, like, the guys I looked up yeah. to. Yeah. Rock him. Oh, oh, man, geez, them shit. outfits. You know what I'm saying? Them cars, because it was, it was, they was on the block. And they didn't smile. They were just no. stoic. And, they were, and was they so just free for all with yeah, the money, like, yeah, you walk past here. Yeah. Like, it was some yeah. guy when, when I'm from in Southeast San Diego. I forget who he is. But it's crazy because my auntie said I remind her mm-hmm. of him because every Sunday, mm-hmm. he used to go to the top of our projects, have candy and money, and just throw it off to us every Sunday. Pie, Piper. He, he was Robin, so free-giving. Yeah. yeah, she was like, you remind me. Because I always thought 
thought of that. Mm -hmm. But she was like, you remind me of him. I'm like, damn, that's crazy because that stuck in my heart. Like, mm -hmm. he didn't care. He was fresh as hell, big ass Benz. I mean, jury right. stupid, right. cool, just be sitting there yeah. with the velour suit on just like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what you hear, man? It was right. nothing. So that's why I'm so free for all to the kids and people that's in need that's around me because I remember what that did to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And them guys was just, them was our superheroes. So, and it's just happy that we could do it in a positive manner because right. they did wrong for yeah, that shit. Exactly. So yeah, we could be the muse of that in a, in a different type of way. Right. So it's a blessing. And just building people up. Yeah. That's what it's about, man. And I, and I look at like my, my kids and, and my son, He he's, you know, he just turned 16. He got a bunch of friends now at his school. Um, and they love being around him. See, I, it's funny. He had a, he had a party the other day and uh, I'm analyzing the other kids and him. I'm just really checking it out. And I was right. like, I felt real good because I seen my son's quality. Right. I'm like, he's solid. Bro. Right. Like, he's good. That's a blessing. You know what I mean? Because you never know if your kid going to be a weirdo. Man, you never know. Somebody kid got I always weird. was scared yeah, of that. Man. Like, dead with my kid going to come out valid, with a light skin with the, with the freckles and all bro, that. Just it, weird in the it corner. It happen. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? God damn. And he, he's just, he's, I couldn't ask for some, a better kid. You know what I'm right. saying? That's a blessing. And man. he, um like, he's a really good kid. And he's cool as shit. And right. that's, I wanted that too. Right. I'd be cool with my kids just a nerd. Right. I'd be fine with yeah, that. As long as you, yeah, but he's, he has that level of intellect, but he's actually really cool. Right. He gets it. You know yeah. what I'm mean? saying? He dressed cool. Counts. Same kind of, like me, good music. You right. know what I'm saying? He actually make beats now. That's dope. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and he's not too good. Like, so he's making beats or learning at least. And I want him and my daughter to learn how to play piano. So, um, I asked them, you know, 16, they're kind of cool. Oh, for so sure. Like, are you good with, you know, a keyboard instructor coming over? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, perfect. So he's not too cool to learn. New yeah. Shit now. So that's a real good thing. He actually started that Saturday, tomorrow. That's legendary. So, yeah, man. So shit is good, bro. Like, it's a lot of work, though, man. When you have kids, bro. Yeah. It's, it's, do you plan on having kids? Uh, I don't really know. I still haven't made my decision up about that. Man, I, I would suggest for you, if you do, to adopt. Right. Because the baby face suck. Fuck it. I always said this, and it's crazy because, you know, <laughs> bitches be trying to come out the woodwork. I always said I would have a kid, uh, uh, like I didn't know about it, and he'd be like three years old, and somebody's tell me, oh, this is your kid type. You know what I'm saying? Mother be <laughs> don't trying that shit. that shit. Though. I know, that's what I'm saying. I know, shit. right? Because it almost happened to me not too long ago. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but it wasn't me. Like, but remember you said, that's deep that you said that. Because uh, I got something yeah. to tell you, no, the fuck you don't. don't. You look like Especially you? now, like, <laughs> motherfucker, <laughs> this is a gold mine, baby, but it ain't mine. Hey, listen, so, so I would adopt. You know what I'm saying? Because right. you don't want to be like the baby face sucks, bro. Right. And it's a lot of kids that don't have homes. And yeah. It's an easy way to give somebody a good life. You know what I mean? But I don't know. These jeans, I think they, they be so legendary. I can't. You know what I mean? I be thinking I, of that, I, too. See, I pass it on then. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I'm you got, yeah. hurry up, though. I know. I, you know I got the 40, baby. This hurry up. Because the... yeah. you got to think, 15, you'll be 55. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you got to be on the HRT. To keep yeah. up with these little motherfuckers. I'm going to have to. <laughs> I, am, I'm a, I can't wait. Shit. I was like, hey, Doc, I'm ready. Run that. They're yeah, right. Man. They had some cool And they're going to have some better shit. That's what I'm saying. By that time, yeah. they had yeah. some good shit. Hell yeah. So, I, mean, I can afford it. So, uh, so yeah, man. So, like, with my kids now, and I, I even want more, bro. That's what's up. That's some real shit. I, 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 like, because I like my house. I like having a family. I didn't have that growing up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I like having everybody at home. I'm stressed out because I got to – look, this is how my days be sometimes, bro. My daughter get up early as me. She's six. Oh, yeah. She knocks so soft. Just She's not uh -huh. trying not to be rude. Yeah. You know what I'm but I could hear it. I'm like, I'm coming. Can we go to the park? Yes. Me and her go to the – first I got to feed the dog, take her to the park. And, she, bro, she cool with five minutes at the park and she ready to go. You right. know what I'm saying? And she said, I went five minutes. I'm like, let's go. She play a little bit. She eat an orange and ready to go. Right. right. Come back. Take Elijah. To, take my son to school. Well, first, before I do anything, I got to have relations with my girl. You know what I'm saying? Wake up. God damn. It's like, God damn. All right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I give everybody what they want. You know <laughs> right. what I'm saying? Because I'm the sun in my, my solar system and right. I got to keep my planets in orbit. Yeah. I got to keep everybody happy and I have no problem with that shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I like that shit, bro. I like feeling needed. That's being dope. Being needed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so dope. I feel like if I didn't have that, I don't know. I don't know what I do. Yeah. You know? See, I guess for me right now, because like I said, I just walked into my like full top level success within the last two years mm -hmm. is that um I'm still doing 
I still wake up with the burden of all the responsibility on me. Right. And uh, I guess after a couple more years, I can relax and be okay with it. Mm -hmm. So now I'm so chasing it and trying to take care of it and keep it, maintain it, mm -hmm. that I'm chasing new business stuff that is hard for me to even think about uh, family or friends. Like, I just be on the grind. Right. So um, I think about within a couple of years when I could, okay, this is truly my life. Like, mm -hmm. this is not going nowhere. I, I, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Then I can relax. You know, it's just, I, I wake up with a, with a, well, with a I hope mode. you don't think shit going to slow down. It ain't, I, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't though. Ain't. It ain't, it's, it's getting more, it's getting crazier every day yeah, though like the like opportunities today, bro, I, right. I, I got home to, to shower change try to eat something and then out the door so it it ain't gonna stop it ain't gonna stop man like i but said I, but you, you gotta make it earlier but you can handle it yeah so i can handle it for good. sure because like I, I feel like when i first was on my super grind even like right before i, I made my way to the youtube thing like when i was waking up five in the morning working out mm -hmm. you know doing the vlogs right after that then going train the kids with the basketball then working out then doing live stream and then edit it and then go to sleep i was doing that every day for like two three years it was such a hard grind but i enjoyed it um so i, I just got tapped back into that right. to that chase mm -hmm. you know what i mean i that's so how i gotta get the once i i told myself once i get my ass up in them five in the mornings again and doing that shit yeah. i'm gonna be back to the, the full are you fledged a, me are you an early riser i'm now? not i'm a gargoyle man oh, yeah. i i i, I, I wake up all night yeah mm -hmm. i stay up all night because i'm a somniac and um so but i'm trying to get more and more sleep and wake up See, early I, I, I don't sleep i just don't sleep right it's, it's i know it's not i guess it's not good but i i get three hours a night yeah if that you know what i'm saying but i'm just used to it i feel like i just and it's funny because today i feel better now but even earlier today i was podcasting with another podcaster yeah and i'm like yo bro do i look tired do i look <laughs> i felt like i looked like just ran down yeah you know what i'm saying and i was just traveling you know what i'm saying and uh and let me talk about that like i'm out there with i'm in miami it was a psychedelics convention right the oh, business shit. side and um uh shout out to my boy jerry that's one of my guys man he's he's the shit like uh he has a, a company called lynn street and he's just a boss he's a vc young guy mm. very corporate and i'm there with all these corporate dudes right and these motherfuckers party like it ain't even oh they different. Business. Oh, they're different i'm like yeah what yeah how and we we had we had a club we had this spot called swine in miami it's lit right but we talking business they dancing and shit right so okay this is how i see the projections yeah. 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 yelling and i'm Listening, I'm yelling back, bro. I'm like, bro, this shit. I can't. I can't do this, bro. Right, I can't, man. Yeah, that shit traumatized me, bro. Yeah, I live. Like I said, I lived a. I lived that outgoing life. Like even like mm -hmm. my younger days, 2021. I lived yeah. in Phoenix when I had all that street money. Mm -hmm. Like I was going to the sporting houses and the mm -hmm. goddamn all them clubs and just pulling up front row, paying the bouncer come in with the whoop, pay the extra bread, and just savagery every day, every mm -hmm. night. But I, I guess I did get old, man. Like, yeah, me never, too, bro. I thought I never would, listen, but listen. I, I can't. I don't go out. I, I can't. can't my it. energy ain't like that no more on no it. party shit. Nah, like, bro. Nah, man. I, I can nah. grind with business. For me, party is going to dinner. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A, a dope group. We go to dinner. Like, we supposed to go out tonight. Right. I think it's going to be dinner. That's what I'm saying, yeah, right? Yeah. Because like it's it got to be a real task for me to go out oh, and man. do something. It's like goddamn. It is it's like <laughs> drivers, <laughs> right? security, yeah. you know, all the shit. And it's all that on you. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? It's too and much. It's a burden. gang of money. A gang of money. Now I do budget for fun. You got but, to, but it's just a it's a whole thing. It's a whole enterprise. You ever go through that time? You be like, damn. Every time I do something, I gotta spend a whole lot of money every day. Don't you be thinking like, God damn? TV, I can't TV asked me, well, how much you spend like when y'all dinner? I like just dinner is five, five. Oh cents, yeah, right? everything is money, man. Yeah. Like it's nothing I don't do that yeah. costs a lot of yeah. money, man. But it's but it's a better experience. But it's life. That's it's what fun. I got it for. Yeah, that's what I got it for. Look, look, it's nothing like you know. Like I like to make people happy. I don't need shit. Right. I'm good. I, I'm good. Good chilling at the house for sure. You know what I'm saying. But I want to give people good experiences. And yeah. let, let people have fun. So it's like, what you want? Uh, I want a, a glass of, a bottle of this. Get everything. You get a bottle too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, because they feel special. Right. Man, we, we, was at, we was at dinner one night, and my uh, I don't even know who this girl was. She just, motherfuckers just be coming and hanging out with us. Right. Just be in the group. They catch that energy. But we had, just got a bottle of Dom, and she was like, I never seen one of these before. <laughs> right. And I was like, that's weird, but 
cool, enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? And it's small things, but it's big to somebody else. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then I know people will be like, oh, materialistic thing. Hey, Shut man. the fuck up. Yeah, you're, who are What's you? What's wrong with materialistic What's wrong things? with that, man? There's nothing. Because you, you, know you ain't got none. You ain't got no yeah. money to get material Aspire shit. to have it. And, and don't bring no Bill Gates on. Them motherfuckers got paint that cost millions. Listen, they got yachts that cost millions. Right. They got carpet people, that cost millions. I hate when people life. put up the stupid memes like, it's so dumb. this guy's dress, his outfit is $100. It's $3,000. This is our rich. No. The no. motherfuckers spend bread all day every day they have the, the they're in the lap of luxury of course some shit that you won't even be able to call right they got you know they got a little microchip to something that's sitting in their goddamn pocket that's they got they walk in the room the climate change for them right lights for them like crazy shit Shut up, one man. of my boys is a, an electrician and for like super rich mansions and shit. right and the shit he be explaining to me i'm like that's why right you know what i'm saying them motherfuckers spend 100,000 like entertainment system so all the speakers through the whole house shit shut up man fiber optic worry about whatever. your own yeah, pockets yeah. man cause that's but, what I'm worrying about but, but yeah but I like materialistic shit yeah I like all kind of shit so for sure it's, it's I, I listen everything is we're everything is so connected bro and you know the more that you understand like anthropology and evolutionary biology and science and you you know I remember when I was coming to the realization that, yo, the earth is a living, breathing organism. No question about it. And we are of the earth. So, like, with us, we got billions of microorganisms and microbes that live on, that coexist with us, right? Yeah. What if that shit conscious? What if they conscious and don't realize that they're a part of something bigger? Right. But we happen to be conscious and we realize that we're a part of something bigger. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This fucking planet. And that shit fascinated me so yeah, I want to touch and feel everything that this world has at a, to offer. At a top level capacity. Right. Um, if you within this 1% or 0.5% of living, why aren't you living in that manner? Like, right. what the hell? is? I got to do it. Yeah. I got to see it and touch it all. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, another thing I always say is one of my best analogies. This is how, like you speaking of the organisms and all that. It's like, we all know that every star is practically almost as big as Earth, right? No, way bigger. Right, right. Yeah. And we don't give a fuck about them, right? Yeah. So everybody is their own star. Right. But Earth is what we focus on. So focus yeah. on your own star and make right. it your own Earth. Right. Stop worrying about everybody else. Look at all them yeah. fucking billions of stars. We don't give a fuck about them. Yeah, man. We worry about Earth. Mm -hmm. Worry about build your Earth, man. Right. Don't be worrying about my star over here. Yeah, and what I recommend is build yourself up physically, yes. mentally, yes. read, spiritually. Yes. And that's just, just finding your own journey, trying to be good people, right. do service for others, you know, financially, because yes. especially the young man. But look, you are... You, I don't give a fuck what y'all say. Call me a cent, whatever the fuck you want to say. But you are worth what you can provide. No That's question. It. No question That's about it. it. Like, you're like worth we, what you can provide. Yeah, we, can slang, we can slang cock all day, but that, that ain't going to last. You, know, it it ain't, you ain't getting no quality chick that you nah. ain't got nothing going on. She's going to be gone, man. Like, out of here. And, and, and that counts. You got to be able, like, I know my niggas, some niggas is just fuck girls and they be leaving. Like, every time I had me a bad chick, they wanted to stay with me, man, because I had potential and then I fulfilled my prophecy and I got the money now. So I was right the whole time. So I, I they gonna get more than just some dick with me. They don't get that too, but they don't get the whole package. Where they gonna go? Where you mm -hmm. gonna go? Right. They, you make you gotta make yourself a, a position of, of power, mm -hmm. and they know they can't leave you. They shit that, gonna be in shambles. It. That's it. Like, and I've always had that. Like, when I'm with a girl, I'm gonna make shit real difficult for her when she we ain't together. You no damn more. right. You know what I'm saying. So, and not by doing anything to her, but just no. like by building her up. She she live she vibrated on a high frequency when yeah. she with me. So, you know, and I know what's out there. I know motherfuckers ain't putting no effort. No. And they got you know run saying? back in that rat trap of yeah. a nigga just playing. A nigga might got yeah. some money, but is he pure as this? He got that understanding. He got that brain. He got that spirituality. Is he motivating you? Or he just get you a bag and he ain't even tell you how to get your own bag. Like, mm -hmm. come on, man. Like, it's you got to be different out here. But right. you got to have some substance, man. Exactly. And you got to get some money, man. Be in shape, look good, feel good, be great, for real. That's that's it right there. That's you gotta you gotta cover all those bases, right? So you could be a complete package. And you know, like my thing is this: with my woman or my women, with whatever the situation is uh -huh. at the time, is just to make them proud. Like they proud. Like yeah, there, yeah, there yeah, yeah. There you go. My girl. I remember she there was um go. she was doing some skit with like you know she be on her skit shit. Right. Um, shout out to Champ and um. She just called me. She was like, I'm around all these dudes. They got all these millions of followers and all that. And they're but they're lame. lame. They're nothing. Yeah. And I got you. 
They're so uncomfortable. They're so already. just little yeah. and just weak and right. nerdy, and yeah. they ain't got this. You everything. Right, I said, right, yeah, right. you're welcome. You, you did your thing. You're welcome. Right? That's, that's what it's about. So when we, when you know, I know it's a lot of conversation about high value male, all that yeah. shit. Yeah. Listen, you got to be tapped in to really make yourself the superhero that you want to be. And it's funny you said movies, like you watch different shit. Cause right. I, I was just having this conversation with somebody. Right. I said, all my life, I, I've been focused on certain types of films and shit, right? Right. Even now, like 300. Of course. Uh, there's a movie, a new movie, bro. You got to peep it out if you haven't. It's called The Green Knight. Okay. Fuck. Have you seen The Harder They Fall? I haven't seen that Oh, movie. shit. The, whole, the, the cowboy shit? The okay. shit Jay-Z just did? Oh, wait. Is uh The e Endress Elba. Is okay, I started watching that, but I fell asleep. Oh, okay. So, yeah, we, we got it. Yeah, yeah. So, so my, I've always been fascinated by movies when, you know, the, the protagonist, he has to go through some epic journey. Yeah, the epic you know movies. Saying? My so, favorite movie of all time is The Pianist. Mm -hmm. um, you seen that movie? Holocaust. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that, that's just life right there. Yeah, that's just, you got to go gold. through it to get to it, you know? Gold. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, the beginning of the movie 300, right. man, I resonate with that so much because Leonidas is a little boy. Right. His father's beating his ass, teaching him how to yeah. fight. Right? And I relate to that. But now, where I'm at now with that movie is when he becomes a teenager and they send him out to go kill a lion, like right? A panther, you know, that what big saying? ass hero. Which you know, a cool little story that they stole from African of folklore. Of course, that's, well, that's what we do. But, we was born that way. But but that's where I'm at now with my son. Now it's time for him to go. Like, yeah, the, with, with yeah, you, those Spartans you know, are so trill. Like they was they, they wanted the glory. They ready for that. That's what it's about. We're going against a million people. Yes, I fucks with Let's that. Let's go. So, even though I ain't gonna lie, you know, I, I, I'm more of a Xerxes nigga though. I don't like all that shit. Me too. But, me too no, I'm me a too, Xerxes bro. nigga. I'm gonna crush you. I, I love the bad guys. Yeah, me too. But I love that spirit of the, but, yeah, of the I, I, of what yeah. they portrayed in Sparta. It's For like, sure. Like I love that shit, bro. Yeah, it was hard. I, it's like let's die then. Yeah, bro. let's let's die. Let's go. Bro. It is what it I is. I was ready for this. I did. I feel for my prophecy. Yeah, bro. So and that's why and you know my girl hate when I talk about death, but I talk about it a lot because. I'm preparing myself for it. Right. And I'm preparing those in my circle for right. it because when it's time, I'm not going to run from it. You know no. what I'm saying? I'll emb I embrace it. Yeah. Am I ready right now? I, I don't know. I like to think that I am, but who knows once it's time. But I want to be prepared. Right. And I want to, like when my grandfather passed away, bro, I had no feeling of sadness. The right. only sadness was like missing him. Of right? course. But I, I knew he was good, man. And I don't know what happened when you died, but... He lived such a dope life. My right. grandfather was the man. Yeah. The man, right? Everybody knew him. He was important to a lot of people. So when he died, it was like this. Like, man, you did a good job. That, and that's yeah, how excellent. it should be. Right. And, and, and like I said, we're in a position that we became somebody. Mm -hmm. We influenced not only people, but our own family. I bought my mom her, her for Benz that she always wanted. I just want that Benz. I got it for her. I bought my mm -hmm. brother his car. He was basically like almost my pops because we, you know what I'm saying, we was on our own. Like right. I, I left my mom crib like at 15 and had my own trap house. And I, we were staying together doing that right. shit. So I had to repay him for allowing me to be the nigga I wanted to be. So it's like, if everything goes down, people are gonna say you did it. You know what I'm right. saying? I made my mom proud, and I did it. It's over. Like I got more to go, of course, but it don't matter. You can't say I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. You can't say I ain't made my mom proud. I got her what she wanted. You can't say I became everything I said I was gonna be. Mm -hmm. It's over for you niggas, man. Right. Right. It's, and then I done it. It's over right. for you niggas, right. man. Right. God bless y'all. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. It's, I won, man. Hell the game yeah. is over, man. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yo, we gotta wrap it up. Uh, but listen, man. I hope y'all got some motivation, man. My man was dropping some jewels, right? Appreciate it. So it, we live in a very interesting time to where, you know, social media gives you access to me to, to right. Mr. Organic to say Fresh and Fit to yeah. Nineteen Keys to Shout so many to dope people, dope people who are vibrating on a very high frequency and have a lot of wisdom and information to share, right? We and giving. It's so many people benefiting from what we do share. I want y'all to do the same. Don't just, don't let this just entertain you. Because Please. sometimes motivation just entertain people. Yeah, I hate that. So use this shit. Use Please this shit use it, dropping. man. You know what I'm saying? So, um, Mr. Organic. Tell them, please, the site, the shit, the game right. is fucking sick. So tell yeah, them about thank that you. again. Uh, Rumble Trader, 
um, make sure y'all go to RumbleTrader.com right now, man. Um, learn something about trading and all that at the same time. Um, just have fun, too. Have fun. It's a game. Um, but you can win money, too. So it's all about that. Um, make sure you go to OrganicLifestyle.com. Got the new merch. Got the new luxury leather bags coming. Also, um, what else? Oh, my new book. I dropped my new book, The Master Manifestation. Just basically my autobiography and my manifestation uh, manifesto. I'm going to help you guys how to manifest your greatness. And uh, everybody want to ask me how I got so much self-confidence. Man, I just believed in myself. I never gave up. I never gave a fuck. There it is there. Self-belief and not giving a fuck what they think. Because fuck right. them. Right. Who? They. Right. Yes. So we out of here. Peace. <laughs> Three of them. The fact, man, for the yes, seed. Yes, sir. Show them motherfuckers, man.